Hi everyone! In this video I want to share 10 exercises that you can do as a beginner oil painter. Oil painting might not be the most straightforward art form out there and it can be intimidating for beginner artists because there's so many aspects that you have to keep in mind. However, there are certain things that you can prioritize at the beginning that will put you on the right path and help you progress faster. And that includes getting to know your tools and what effects you can create with them, learning to see and translate value, learning to identify the larger shapes and value zones instead of focusing on small details, and learning the basics of color mixing and starting to get the feeling for color harmony. The exercises in this video are meant to help you develop those skills and create a foundation which you can build on top of later. Exercise number one is monochrome paintings. Color is awesome, I know. It's what makes painting so fun, but also that much more difficult. Color theory is one of the most difficult of art fundamentals, and one thing you need to understand about color at the beginning is that it largely builds on value. Value is how light or dark something is, and it's at the very basics of our perception. So if your values are not coherent, then it really doesn't matter how beautiful or harmonious your colors are. That's why monochrome paintings are the best way to get started. They will help you take a mind of the more complex things like color theory and help you establish a solid foundation and get to know your medium. Values are something that a lot of beginner painters have issues with, so uh, painting in grayscale will make it easier for you to identify those mistakes and correct them. Painting in grayscale isn't the most fun exercise out there, so if it's really too boring for you, then feel free to use another dark color, such as raw umber or paints gray or olive green, like I did in this couple of studies. It will still uh, help you get a wide range of values and establish your value zones, so why not? <laughs> I have two main tips for these studies. One is to premix five values and try to stick to using a value that's close to one of them for a given area, which will help you establish your value zones. And two is to establish your darkest darks first. The titanium white is a very strong pigment that's very difficult to control, so use it sparingly and try to leave it for last. The next exercise is to paint using a limited palette. When it comes to colors, less is usually more in oil painting. That's why painting with a limited palette has significant advantages. It helps you easily establish color harmony in your piece, uh, avoid overmixing your paints, and also you don't need that many pigments to complete the piece. In the study of a painting by Edgar Maxens, I used the Zone palette which is the most widely used limited palette and it includes uh, titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red and ivory black. If you're thinking about buying your first set of oil paints, I'd suggest you go for those instead of uh, like a tank color set. Other popular palettes include the monochrome palette, uh, such as the grayscale palette, uh, complementary and analogous colors, uh, triadic and tetradic palettes, and yeah, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see a separate video on those. Exercise number three is to paint with a time limit. So another thing you can do is set a time limit for yourself when you are painting. For example, an hour or 30 minutes if you're feeling confident. Obviously, you shouldn't aim to produce a finished, polished piece with this. Uh, so consider this an exercise, no strings attached. Uh, this will help you take your mind off the small details and help you focus on the larger shapes and value zones. My biggest tip here is to squint if you are using a reference and try to step away from your painting every now and then so you can see those larger relationships. Exercise number four is to transfer your drawing onto your painting surface and then paint on top of it. Drawing and painting require different sets of skills, so why not take care of the drawing aspect from the get-go so you don't have to worry about it during your painting process. Try transferring your drawing onto your canvas so you establish your lines and proportions from the start and don't struggle with trying to correct them later. Here I used transfer paper to trace the drawing and then flipped it and applied some charcoal on the other side. Then I attached the transfer paper to my painting surface and traced it again. Try using different colored pencils or pens for this, by the way. 
so you can better see which lines have already been traced and which haven't. As you can see, the result is a clean drawing that gives you a foundation that you can paint on top of and focus more on establishing your values, forms and brushwork. Another great exercise you can do is thumbnails. You probably noticed that setting limitations for yourself is a recurring theme here and uh, thumbnails is another way you can do it. A thumbnail is a very small painting, usually done in preparation for a larger piece. This time you are limiting the space that you're working on. Try to keep your thumbnails as small as you can. And this has a similar effect to squinting and forces you to focus on the larger shapes, composition and color harmony, unless you're doing a value study like I'm here. Even though it's a great exercise for beginner oil painters, a lot of professional painters also use thumbnails to work out their composition before they dive into a larger piece. Exercise number six is to paint using shapes. This exercise goes hand in hand with thumbnails and the goal is to paint using larger shapes. Try to divide up your composition into no more than seven main shapes, uh, with each one of those having its own distinct value. For example, in this small painting I used seven shapes that form seven value zones. One for the forest in the background, one for the snow, the raven and the basket have a very similar value and can be grouped together. One distinct shape for the shawl on the girl and one for her dark coat. Her headscarf is a lighter value and can be assigned its own zone, while the face is slightly darker, so it gives us our seventh shape. Try to simplify your shapes as much as you can and stick to a narrow value range within each zone so you make them more distinct. This will help you create a solid composition with clear elements. The next exercise is color mixing. Color mixing can be confusing at first, but there's a science behind it and it can be easily learned. You need to know which colors are primary and how to make secondary colors, which colors are complementary and neutralize each other, and how to make a color lighter or darker or cooler or warmer. You can start by taking yellow, red and blue, uh, the traditional primaries, and mix green, orange and violet, and see what limitations those have. Try mixing the different colors together and see what tones you can get out of that, which colors can work together and which create mud. You can also create a color map like this one uh, by taking the colors and the mixtures that you have and adding more and more white to them. Exercise number eight is color matching. Once you've experimented uh, with color mixing and started to get a hang of it, try to take a reference and mix a color that's similar to the one that you're seeing in it. You can either print it out and put the paint directly on the reference or just hold the pigment on a palette knife next to it to compare. If it doesn't match, then try to think which of the color properties is wrong. Is it hue, saturation or value? For example, if it's too bright, then try adding a bit of that color's complement. If it's too cool, then try adding a bit of yellow or red into it, and so on. Next exercise is the most fun for me, and it's master studies. Once you've practiced with the previous exercises and started getting more comfortable with your medium, uh, you can try to apply those skills to a master study. We all stand on the shoulders of giants and doing master studies is the best way to put yourself in your favorite artist's shoes. And for a few moments, they almost become your teacher. At least that's how I feel when I do master studies. And you don't have to make the exact copy either. Try to focus on what you like the most about that artist's work. Is it the way light and shadow interact with each other? Or maybe it's the colors that they use, then try to match those. By the way, I feel like it might be a little confusing as to who a master is and where would copyright infringement law apply. So far as I know, uh, copyright applies for 70 years after an artist's death, so after that you should be fine with making copies and sharing your work if you follow that rule. With the more recent and living artists, it's more of a grey zone, but I feel like you should be fine if you don't share your studies and, God forbid, try to pass them as your own work. Of course, when you do share your work, uh, always give credit where it's due, regardless of those time frames. And the final exercise I have for you is uh, to paint using just a palette knife. 
I know this might seem like an odd one out, but hear me out. I feel like it has two main advantages, and one is that you learn how to use a palette knife, which will come in handy later when you can create cool textures with it in your work. And two is that you will be forced to forget all about detail. You're not going to be able to create much detail with a palette knife, uh, which is kind of the point of a lot of these exercises. Try using just a palette knife uh, without any brushes to mix and apply your paint onto your painting surface. And you can use something like a landscape because you don't have to worry so much about detail as you would if you were painting a face, for example. I feel like a lot of beginner painters feel intimidated by palette knives and are just not sure what to do with them. And this exercise helps you get past that initial fear and helps you understand how much easier it is to use it to mix your paints and how you can create cool different textures with it in your future work. You might also find that it will be easier for you to use brushes after this exercise, so it's a win-win really. So these are the 10 exercises you guys can do if you are just starting out with oil paint and some of them will continue to be handy much later on in your artistic path as well. Let me know which ones you have tried for yourself and which exercises you thought were the most helpful. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.